Hyperlapse is one of the most spectacular techniques in photography and videography. But it is also one of the most technically demanding. Over the years I've shot hundreds of time lapses with various ground-based cameras and drones. Drones are ideal tools for hyperlapses as they can move in a smooth path, a bit like a huge slider in the sky. In this video I will show you how to get the most out of the hyperlapse mode with a Mini 5 Pro. Time lapses and hyperlapses consist of a series of photos taken at a constant interval and assembled as a video sequence. There is a difference between the two terms. In a time lapse, the point of view is static, in other words, the drone overs. It is used when the scene already contains a good amount of movement. In a hyperlapse, the aircraft moves, adding extra movement to the scene. There are three important variables to set for best results. The interval between shots, the length in seconds of the short movie, and the shutter speed value. It is crucial to use manual exposure to control the shutter speed value and manual white balance to avoid color shift. Hyperlapses can also be taken in portrait mode, a big plus for users active on social media. At the end of the shooting process, a short 4K movie is generated by the app. It is also possible to save the individual photos as RAW or JPEG for processing the sequence and assembling the images in a video editor. However, with the Mini 5 Pro, on most occasions, this is not needed as the quality of the auto-generated short movie is outstanding. In most cases, I like to shoot 300 photos, as it makes it easy to compute the time needed according to the interval between shots. At an interval of one photo every two seconds, the shooting time will be 10 minutes. At an interval of three seconds, it will take 15 minutes, a 4 seconds, 20 minutes, and so on. With 300 photos, the length of the resulting hyperlapse will be just above 12 seconds when using a frame rate of 24 frames per second. This is the minimal length for a meaningful short movie. With ground-based cameras, we can go for much longer movies. But with drones, we are limited by battery life. The Mini 5 Pro has a battery life about 3 minutes longer than the Mini 4 Pro, which is particularly useful for hyperlapses. Considering the time for taking off, setting the hyperlapse, and returning home, we can comfortably get at least 15 minutes of actual shooting. To stay on the safe side, we should aim for 300 photos, although in my tests I've been able to easily take 350 photos at an interval of 3 seconds for a movie of almost 15 seconds. The Intelligent Flight Battery Plus adds extra flexibility with an extended flight time, which is a big bonus for hyperlapses. Sadly, it is not available in EU countries. The shutter speed value is the most important factor for hyperlapses as it controls the amount of motion blur in the moving elements within the scene. The correct amount of motion blur is crucial. If you're serious about time lapses and hyperlapses, I suggest watching my specific video by clicking on the link above. For time lapses and hyperlapses with drone, the ideal shutter speed value is between 1 and 2 seconds. But what happens when using faster values? At the very fast shutter speed of 1 over 1000 of a second, the movement of the car is very jumpy, totally different from what we see in real life. 
unwatchable. At the speed of 1 over 50, things get slightly better, but the car movement is still stuttering. At one fourth of a second, the result is acceptable. We're almost there, but not quite. At one second, we get the correct motion blur and battery smooth movement. For such long shutter speed value, a set of ND filter is needed. In the description, you will find the link to the one I use, the Freewell All Day 6 Pack for the Mini 5 Pro. It offers a wide range of ND values, from ND16 to ND1000, suitable for all light conditions, for video, photo and hyperlapses. With the Mini 5 Pro Fly More Combo, DJI offers a set of three ND filters, which is fine for video, however, they are not strong enough for hyperlapses or long exposure photography. The interval between shots affect the speed of the movement within the hyperlapse. Due to the battery life, we have fewer choices with a drone compared to a ground-based camera. Intervals of 2 or 3 seconds are a good choice when the moving elements of the scene are people walking or vehicles. An interval of 4 or 5 seconds is more suitable when the movement is mostly in clouds. But in this case, we have to reduce the number of images for a shorter movie. With the 2 second interval, we can aim for at least 400 photos and a longer 16 second clip. With previous lightweight DJI models, the slowest shutter speed available with this interval is 1 quarter of a second. So we cannot set the ideal 1 second one. However, the Mini 5 Pro has a faster buffer, so the 1 second shutter speed is available. If you need a longer clip, the interval of 2 seconds is a good choice. If you prefer faster moving subjects, an interval of 3 seconds is the better option. We access the hyperlapse functionalities through the icon above the shutter. A vertical menu appears to the left with the four hyperlapse modes free, circle, course lock, and waypoint. A small window appears in the lower part of the screen. We can open it by tapping on the arrow to the right. Here we can enter the interval between each shot, the length of the movie in seconds, and the maximum speed. Just above, we can check the resulting shooting time and number of photos. The window applies for the first three modes, while the interface for waypoint mode is different. In free mode, it is possible to move the drone in any direction while shooting using the remote controller. I do not find this technique useful, as it produces jumpy footage. I much prefer using the powerful waypoint mode for more flexibility and smoother results. I only use free mode for time lapses with the drone in a static position. In circle, the drone orbits around the target, which is useful as circular moves are difficult to replicate using waypoint. After selecting this mode, we shoot a subject that will be the center of the rotation by drawing a box around it with a finger. Then we enter the values for interval, length and speed. We must also specify the direction of the rotation, clockwise or counterclockwise. I suggest very low speed values. Either 0 0.1 or 0 0.2.
In course lock mode, we disconnect the camera orientation from the flight direction. The settings are similar to circle mode, but this time a lock icon is above the small window. We orient the drone toward the desired flight direction and tap on the lock icon. Then we choose a target by drawing a box around it for the camera direction. The camera will remain pointed at the target while flying diagonally. I never use course lock, as we can obtain the same result with more flexibility using waypoint mode. Waypoint is the king of hyperlapse mode and the one I use most of the time. It is possible to set up precise paths by creating several points. For each point, the position of the drone, its elevation, the camera orientation, the gimbal roll and the zoom level are stored in memory. The software will handle the smooth transition between points. At each point, it is possible to modify the speed of the flight. Even more importantly, each mission can be stored in memory and performed at different time of the day, in various light conditions or in other seasons. We rarely need many points, in most cases I only use two or three. Here I will show only the basic setting, as I will do a specific video about Waypoint Hyperlapse Mode with the Mini 5 Pro. I suggest subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell to be notified. After choosing Waypoint in the Hyperlapse menu, the small window on the screen says Set Waypoint. I want to start from a top-down view of the square of the little village. So I position the drone and the camera, open a small window and tap on the empty icon on the left to set the first point. I then move backward, lowering the altitude and tilting the gimbal slightly upward to maintain the view on the center of the village. I can now tap on the next icon to set the second and last point. I then set the interval to 3 seconds and the movie length to 12 seconds. In waypoint mode, the speed of the mood is determined by the distance traveled and the number of photos. The longer the distance, the faster the move. This is the result. A new functionality of the Mini Fire Pro compared to previous Light 12 models is the flexible gimbal rotation. It can be applied to hyperlapses. After flying to the first point, I rotate the gimbal by 30 degrees to the left using the wheel of the controller while pressing the function button. For the second point, I add a 30 degree rotation in the opposite direction. Click on this link to watch my video about photography with the Mini 5 Pro. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.